Let's turn today to Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, and verse 12. And it was at this time, or in these days, that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. It's interesting to see what that time was when he went off into the mountain to pray and spent a whole night in prayer to God. When we see the verse immediately preceding it, we read there it was a time when people were filled with rage and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. And Jesus, since he had come in our flesh and was limited by our limitations, sought his Father in prayer, sought God in prayer that he might be at rest, not be anxious, not be disturbed, not be bitter, but remain in love and in faith, in love towards them and in faith towards God, believing that God would work everything out in the right way at the right time. And when day came, Verse 13, this is the other reason he went out to pray all night. He called his disciples to him. He had a number of them, perhaps 70 or more, and chose 12 of them whom he also named as apostles. And how did he know whom to choose? That's what he had sought the Father about in prayer the previous night. Father, I don't want to lean upon my own reason, Jesus would have said, to select the ones whom I think are fit to be apostles. He did not lean upon his own reason. He sought the Father in prayer. And that was the secret. And that's why Jesus completed his ministry in three and a half years. Many people don't do even 1% of that in a hundred years because they lean upon human reason. The important thing, dear friends, is to finish the work God has given to us to do. And when we seek co-workers, select those who are to work with us or to carry on a work, how many are there who seek God in prayer? Jesus, the one who had never sinned, whose mind was clear as crystal, sought the Father in prayer because he could not lean upon even his sinless reason. The principle of leaning upon reason was wrong, even if that reason had never sinned, as in Jesus' case. How much more we need to seek God in prayer. We who have sinned so much, whose reason and mind and understanding have been defiled and corrupted and warped so much by sin. How much we need to seek God in prayer to know what the Father's will is. If it is only a question of finding out twelve names, that wouldn't have taken more than one minute. If it was just a question of the father telling him 12 names, how long does it take to hear 12 names? One minute. Why did Jesus have to pray all night? Even in Jesus' case, prayer meant speaking to God and listening to God. It's just like a telephone where it's got a mouthpiece and a earphone. You speak and you hear. Prayer was like that for Jesus and that's how it's meant to be for us. He had to wait on God the whole night to be clear in his spirit as to who those twelve were. It was not a question of a voice from heaven saying, these are the twelve. As I said, that would have taken only one minute. No, God revealed his will to Jesus the way he reveals his will to us, not by a voice from heaven but by an impression on our spirit that comes and becomes more and more clear as we wait upon God in prayer. Jesus did not find God's will in any easier way. Those who are lazy 
never find God's will. They do what their reason tells them and say that is the will of God and usually ruin their life and their ministry. But Jesus never made a mistake because he waited on the Father and he set aside what his reason would have suggested and chose those whom his Father impressed upon his spirit to select. Because the Father alone knew all hearts and even today it's God alone who knows people's hearts. And if we would, if we would only wait upon God, we would be saved from so many mistakes in our life and decisions that we take, even little things concerning our job, marriage, so many things. If we would wait upon God, we could make so many fewer, so very fewer mistakes in our life. And Jesus chose Simon, whom he named Peter, Andrew his brother, verse 14, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew. Bartholomew is probably Nathaniel, the one whom Jesus said, in whom there is no guile. Matthew and Thomas. James, the son of Alphaeus. And Simon, who was called a zealot. Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Verse 16 makes it very clear that Judas Iscariot was not a traitor when Jesus called him. It's very clearly written there, he became a traitor. Which means that when Jesus called him, he was just as wholehearted and sincere and good as Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, John or any of the others. They were all sincere, wholehearted, ones whom God impressed upon Jesus' heart to select. But one of them became a traitor, which teaches us that a sincere, wholehearted disciple of Jesus who starts off very well can finally become a traitor and a betrayer and descend to such a level that Jesus had to say about him in John 17, it were better for him if he had not even been born. None of us can presume on God's grace. We can't believe that because God has selected us, we can live as we like. He who endures till the end will be saved. And it's easy for one who begins in the spirit to end up in the flesh. And so the example of Judas Iscariot is a warning to all of us. There are people who feel that Jesus selected Judas Iscariot merely to fulfill scripture that some one of his disciples should betray him. It would be a great insult to Christ and to God the Father to believe such a lie. And scripture doesn't say anything like that. Scripture says Judas Iscariot became a traitor, which is a very clear testimony to the fact that he was not a traitor to start with. If he'd been a traitor at that point, it would have been written concerning him and Judas Iscariot, who was a traitor. When we read scripture exactly, we understand the truth that he was not. He became one. And it's possible for any wholehearted disciple to become one. God may have selected you like he selected Judas Iscariot. And yet you may fall away if you are not faithful. If you don't endure till the end. It's possible for a dear brother in Christ. We read in Hebrews 3.12 to fall away from the living God by having an evil unbelieving heart. And that's why we need to be careful, every one of us. And the other thing we see in this list of disciples is that it was a pretty mixed bunch of people with diverse views. There was Simon the Zealot, the man who was against the whole Roman system and against tax collectors, and there was Matthew the tax collector. People who politically were at the opposite ends and who away from Jesus' presence would have probably fought and stabbed each other but who Jesus selected. Jesus selects people who are such opposites to be workers together so that on the cross they couldn't become one until the cross was an accomplished fact but on the cross Jesus made these opposites one. And Simon the Zealot and Matthew the tax collector could become one and workers together with God. It's a great example for us 
to understand and follow today, even today, Jesus calls those who are so completely different from each other. And he calls us to be one. These people were so different, even in their temperament. Simon Peter, for example, and John were so completely different. John was the meditative type and Simon Peter was the one quick of action, impulsive. God calls people who are introverts and extroverts to be his apostles. What he requires is wholeheartedness. Temperamental differences make no difference to him. If we are wholehearted, the Lord can take care of all those prejudices and temperamental differences and make us one in his kingdom. And we read here, he descended with them and stood in a level place and there was a great multitude of his disciples and a great throng of people. Verse 17, from all Judea and Jerusalem, and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him, to be healed of their diseases and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were being cured. And all the multitude were trying to touch him for power was coming from him and healing them all. Again we see some words similar to what we saw in Luke 5, 16 and 17. That Jesus spent time in prayer and the power of the Lord was present for healing. Here we read that Jesus spent a whole night in prayer to God. Verse 12. And the power of the Lord was coming forth from him in verse 19. Jesus needed to be in constant touch with the Father for that power to flow through him. It was not automatic because he was once anointed with the Holy Spirit. This is the mistake so many have made today. Let's learn from Jesus' example to wait upon God in prayer.